What's up everybody, Jacob Wheeler here, iCast 2019 here at the Duckett booth, and I'll tell you what, I'm so happy to give you an opportunity to bring my brand new rod series with Duckett Fishing, the Jacob Wheeler Signature Series, to you all. Now, I spent a lot of time really trying to get this thing perfect. Now, rod actions are so important because obviously you can't do what you have to do every day without having that you know, the perfect action in that rod. And you guys know me, I'm a topwater freak. I love throwing a topwater, a frog rod. Now, my favorite rod in the whole series, I had one rod, let me grab it. Let me find my seven, I have seven foot medium, I gotta find him. He's trying to hide on me. Seven foot medium heavy. Okay, now this rod right here, I'm gonna tell you what it is. The rod, first look, blue, blue, white, a little bit of red, a little contest American like having a good time with it and on top of it having the black sleek look that's something that I just for me a personal I like EVA foam feel when I grab that handle it's pretty light I also don't have to worry about the cork you know cork it gets dirty for with that EVA foam you don't have to worry about that getting dirty at all uh, on top of it a seven foot medium heavy is my all-around top water rod this rod is gonna be a great vibrating jig rod this rod is going to be a great spinnerbait rod for shallow, you know, roll casting. It's, it's all around like lighter, lighter, like wacky worms if you want to throw it on a casting rod. But ultimately, the top water for this rod is is what I use it for. It's a buzz bait. It's it's a, a big walking bait. It's a smaller walking bait. It's a skitter prop. It's a skitter pop. Whatever you need to throw on your top water for the most part, other than the smaller poppers, I would say. This rod is going to be able to handle all of it, up to those bigger skitter V's, the big top waters that are almost you know an ounce or so. I'll throw it on this rod right here, and the reason for that is it's not a very fast. It's a little bit of a faster rod up top, it has a little bit more tip up here, but it's a parabolic action, so it has a lot of power back further into it. So that's something important on all of the all of these rods. There's Keegan guides, okay? So Keegan guides. We spent. I told him like we got to have a good quality. Really good quality guide where I don't have to worry about these guides popping out. That's the worst thing. I'm like, I don't want to deal with that. And I've had a, no issues so far with any of these Keegans popping out. They seem a really good quality guide. You don't have to see a foregrip, okay? I didn't want a foregrip right here. I wanted it to be sleek. I wanted it to be easy. I wanted it to feel natural, but also have a direct connect with the blank. That is really, really, and truly important. Because when I'm handling my, when I handle my rods, just from casting rods, I have a direct connect with the blank. And I'm pulling on this thing, I pick it up. I'm just, I always know what's going on if I'm fishing jig or fishing offshore, and I really need to know the sensitivity and feel what's going on. I always have the direct connect to my hands to that blanket. That is really, truly important. On top of that is my hook hanger on my casting rods is up front and center. Now, the reason I did this was I wanted, when I'm flipping or I'm throwing top water, I want to be able to put it on there and then take it out really easily, really quickly. I don't like to be able to have to unrig a Texas rig worm or Texas rig guggenbaits you know, drag and drop, whatever it might be. If I have something Texas rigged, I want to be able to slip it. And what I can do is when it comes like this, you can open it up just a little bit to there's room, you slide it in there, slide it out. If you want it to where it's closed, you just push him down, he's closed. You don't have to worry about your line getting up underneath there as much. And so that's a nice feature of the rod. So the seven foot, medium heavy, top water rod, vibrating jig rod, spinner bait, lots of different things. Let's go to the next one. Okay, so the seven six heavy flipping rod, all around flipping rod. The key with this rod is parabolic. I need a parabolic, I want a heavy action, but yet parabolic pitching and flipping rod. When you flip into, you know, a, a grass bed or flipping milk foil or you're flipping lay down trees, when you hook a big fish in that stuff, you need a rod that has something to spring them out of it. And what a parabolic rod does better than anything is just that. You want to have a direct connect you want to have something that you don't give them any line. If you, if you lose the tension off that fish, if you lose the feel of that fish with a fast action flipping rod, you're going to have issues with that all the time. Because you set the hook, and if you go back to reel and you get to where there is slack in the line, that fish is most of the time going to come off. But this rod right here springs them out of the cover. You got it's just it's just physics. When you set the hook, that rod continues to load. Okay, so it loads all the way down. I reel down, loads all the way down into here and then it starts to spring back up. When you're constantly whining, that rod does a lot of the work for you and gets the fish out of that heavy cover. Um, this rod's also a great big football jig rod, a big worm, flipping mill foil, flipping. I did make it a little bit of the lighter side of a heavy, so that is something to know. 
It's a little bit of on the lighter side of the heavy. I can throw a single swim bait, a hard head. This is my all around offshore rod as well. So I wanted to have a rod, I throw a scrounger on it. I can throw basically everything that I'm gonna need to do. A, 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 basically a magnum swell. I don't throw a magnum spoon on them, but I'll throw like a mini mag. I'll throw any kind of big spoons on them for the most part. Overall, you can do about everything you need to offshore fishing with this rod right here. And that's why I wanted, I wanted an all around good flipping rod, but also soft enough to be able to throw single swim baits and all that kind of stuff. So, number two. So let's just go with the spinner rod to mix it up with y'all because it's a little bit different than spinning. The spinning rod that's right here, this is my 7.2 medium heavy action rod, okay? 7.2 medium heavy, this rod is a parabolic action, very much so like the flipping rod, but what it does have, <laughs> what it does have ultimately is it has the hook hanger on the very bottom. This is gonna allow you to be able to slide your drop shot weights in and out and not have to unhook it. You don't, who, I cannot stand my drop shot weight flipping around, wrapping around my dang stuff. And, and that right there is gonna be super easy. Pop it off, pitch your drop shot out there and you're ready to go. So 7.2 is, is gonna be great for a shake yet, great for a little bit heavier Ned rigging. Um, any little bit heavier cover, that's what I, and it has a little bit more extra length, big tubes, up to a half ounce, three quarter ounce tubes. This is like my bigger, beefier spinning rod. So the difference is, same thing, Keegan guides, I did go with a little bit different. My guide length is it's like a mic, it's like a between a micro and, and a traditional style. So we're sort of in between. I want it big enough to where whatever knot you tie, you don't have to worry about you're not going through if you're going braid to fluorocarbon. But at the same point in time, I want to make sure that the weight of the rod is not, you know, that much heavier because you're putting bigger guides on. So it's sort of the in-between for me, that's what I enjoy and I really like, and that's what I have on basically all of my all my rods. So that's number three. We'll do that little spinner rod just to get him knocked out. Seven foot, medium action, super fast tip on this one. This one's where for those light, small mouth guys, for, for throwing a small little hair jig, a spy bait, small swim bait, this rod right here has a lot of, it's a super fast tip. So when you get there and you drop that, drop that, that drop shot down there, that fish bites it, and your rod just flexes a little bit, you go to set the hook, that fish has no idea you're there. Now I will say this, I would suggest using more of like a like a drop shot hook, like nose hooking, this is what I'm gonna use, this rod right here. If I'm gonna go to like more of a um, finesse Nico or Texas rigging drop shot, I'm gonna use the 7.2 medium heavy. You need something a little bit heavier to drive the hook if it's Texas rig, you need something a little bit lighter if you're nose hooking. So that's what I would go with this rod. Also great for a wacky worm. Something, anything lighter applications, this is the rod I'm gonna use. Now, my crankbait rod's a little bit different. You're gonna notice, um, in my opinion, all over the country, I, I fished a lot of different places and I've cranked a lot. And I just, I can't get over, and, and it's just like for every one of us, like that I, I mean, I've talked to a lot of the pros, I've, I've, done, like, I've done a lot myself. Graphite composite is a heavier rod, like feeling heavier, but it is the only way to go in my mind for cranking shallow. When you're throwing square bills, you're throwing DT6s, this rod right here is your workhorse. It's a medium heavy action. It's a little bit lighter of a medium heavy, but it has a very good tip. And it, the thing is with your rods on a cranking rod, it's a graphite composite, so it loads. You have the action of the rod, and this thing, you don't, well the problem with a graphite in my mind, cranking, this is shallow water cranking. You feel too much. You snap set, you pull on it too much. When a fish bites this rod, the crankbait, it allows time for that fish to get it in its mouth, the hooks start going, and you pull into them and you're good to go. That is what you want in a cranking rod. And I feel like I've gotten it just about perfect with my 7.2 cranking rod. And this is the graphite composite. Like I said, it's the only rod in the series that is graphite composite. But I had to have it because ultimately in my mind, that's the best way, best thing you can have for cranking. Sorry, right, let's go to the next one. 7.2 medium heavy, same thing. This is casting. Uh, this is my frog rod. I don't want a rod that's seven foot. I don't want a rod that's seven four. I want it in between. And this rod right here is your all around frog rod. So I've designed it. So now this is not the only thing it'll do. Don't get me wrong. The seven two frog rod, what it does day in and day out, so good. It's gonna be good enough for fishing in mats and it's gonna be really good for skipping under trees. I have a fast tip, fast tip towards the tip. And then it goes directly to backbone down in the about 
eight inches down off of the rod. That's gonna allow me to be able to skip really well and be able to impart the action and walk the frog, but I'm gonna have that direct connect and really be able to drive that hook home. So throwing a 65 pound braid, you need something to be able to do that, and this rod does just that. I'm telling you, like, now it's not only just great for that, but it's also a really good light flipping rod. If you're trying to flip, it's a light flipping rod. You can pitch with it a little bit. It does have a faster tip, so I'm not gonna, you know, like I talked about, you want a parabolic rod for flipping heavier cover, I'll probably use this more lighter stuff, but overall it's gonna be a good all around medium heavy rod, but awesome for a frog. Okay, right here, we have the 7.3 heavy action rod. Now, my 7.3 heavy is, again, parabolic. You're getting a little bit of it. Some of my rods are fast, some of my rods are parabolic. My 7.3 heavy is my all around football head jig rod. This is my all around flipping and pitching rod. It is a little bit towards the lighter end of a heavy. I wanted something that I could throw a, a big hair jig offshore on, also throw a football head jig on, but ultimately, that I can sort of catch them on a catch them on a weightless worm like a lunker log or a cinco. I catch them on a fluke. This is sort of like my all around, you know, worm rod and in between. So it could even it even works fine for a big spinner bait, a heavier chatter bait, stuff like that. This rod's gonna be able to do just that. Right. Okay. My seven three medium heavy is more of my vibrating jig, my spinner bait. Um, I wanted something, you gotta have something that has enough tip in the rod, and I wanted something to have a little more distance. So my seven foot medium heavy and my seven three medium heavy are very similar in action. But the distance, three inches of distance is a huge deal for being able to fish grass flats, places that you need a little more distance on your cast. So that's exactly what I did just right here as I added a little bit more to it, but also this is more of my open water vibrating jig rod and more stuff like that, you know, a spinner bait, single swim bait, fluke, it'll work for other things, but it's all around good, but those are the things that I, I really use. All right, my last but not least, my 610 medium action rod. Now, 610, this is my jerk bait rod, this is my uh, you know smaller crank baits, really small stuff that I can't throw my graphite composite on, I can throw this rod right here and get away with it. On top of that, it, it, it's also like, you know, good for a little bit lighter stuff. You have like little lighter poppers, um, like a skitter pop, that's the rod I'm gonna use for that. So multiple different things, but really this rod was designed for me for a jerk bait. And the big thing you're gonna see is handle length. When jerking, you don't want a big long handle because you have it right here locked into your shoulder, and back here in your wrist, and you, when you start to snap in that jerk bait, you wanna have freedom to really impart that action of that bait. So that's something that was really, 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 really important. And on top of that, hey, they're all having fun here at ICAST, trust me. Everybody's having a good time. So if you see, if you guys listen to a lot of this noise, we're having a lot, they just literally, everybody's having a good time, regardless. 610 medium is my jerk bait, it's all around, but I also made it to where it's a little bit longer than a 6'6". Six six. I love a 6'6", six six and I like a seven footer, but it's in the middle of the road. It's a good top water rod for lighter top waters, lighter crankbaits, lighter jerk baits. Overall, the series is awesome. I'm obviously partial to it because it's my own, but I truly am so proud to bring this set of rods to Jacob Wheeler's Sager Series from Duggan Fishing.